So what's it take to change? Well, the you change, most people keep their attention, always their awareness on their body. They keep their attention on everything in their environment, <clears throat> people and things. Their, their brain is always scanning everything around us to determine what's known and unknown, what's, what's safe, safe and, and unsafe, right? And, you know, we do that all the time. So our research shows that the moment you take your attention off your body and you go from somebody to nobody, you take your attention off the people in your life and go from who you identify with from someone to no one and so many people spend their whole life building an identity of being someone take your attention off your cell phone your computer your car and go from something to nothing take your attention off where you're sitting where you need to be some place you have to go go from somewhere to nowhere and take your attention off time linear thinking about the predictable future of the familiar past and fall into the generous present moment and go from some time to no time then all you're left with is consciousness mm -hmm. and that's the moment you're no longer playing by the same rules of matter to matter and there's an, a, a very elegant moment that takes place in the brain in fact I was just showing my research to a group of researchers in uh, Santa Cruz this past week and they were blown away and I said now watch this person this person's going to have a transformational moment. They said, how do you know? I go, I, I've seen enough of these. And the next moment, the whole brain just lights up. That person is switched on. They, they'll never be the same person again. They're having a transcendental moment. And we could actually predict it and teach it now. It's a formula. Mm. Just like you doing sports, it just becomes a formula. Sure. And then you change the formula and you add to it, right? So when you no longer are you know, identifying with your body, your environment, and time, that's the moment you're pure consciousness. Now, you're just an idea. You're an awareness. Awareness. Awareness that has nothing to do with local space and time. And now, if you're no longer. You can go beyond you can anything. Go, you can go beyond, and that's when the brain, because the brain doesn't change the brain, it takes a long time. It takes a long time for the personality to change the personality, for the ego to change the ego. The programs to change the programs takes forever. Matter takes a long time to change matter. But when you're in this moment, you're no longer playing by those rules. Consciousness is the phenomenon above matter. In fact, consciousness is beginning to activate or manipulate circuits in the brain. People just think the brain is creating consciousness. No, consciousness is executing the brain, right? So then, if the brain can change, then the mind doesn't change the brain. Mind is the brain in action. It's consciousness that changes it. So when people begin to disengage and get beyond themselves, you are at your absolute best when you get beyond yourself. Then getting the person to that point. How does someone get to that point? Yeah, so we teach them that formula. We teach them to that point where all of a sudden they reach that generous present moment where they just feel connected. And when they're in that place, all the things they thought they wanted they actually no longer want because they feel like they already have them. So then imagine living your life from that place. You would be less uh, judgmental. Uh, and you would be less frustrated. Right. You would be less impatient. Less reactive. Yeah. And so, so the formula then is that it requires a clear intention, which is a coherent brain. And when you're living stressed out and something goes wrong, and you're threatened or you can't predict an outcome or you have the perception that something's getting worse or you can't control it, you switch on that fight or flight nervous system that yep. we talked about. Yep. Now here's what happens. When that occurs, you start shifting your attention from one person to one problem, the one thing to another person to another place because your brain is trying to predict the next moment. Well, every one of those people and things and places has this neurological network in your brain. So as you shift your attention from one to the next, it's like a lightning storm in the clouds. Your brain starts firing very incoherently. When your brain is incoherent, you're incoherent. And when you're living by the hormones of stress, not a time to create, no. not a time to open your heart, not a time to learn, not a time to trust. <laughs> and it's a time to run, fight, or hide. So people spend 70% of their time of their life living in the state. Wow. So think about it. So Miserable. Then, yeah, so then when you're under stress, if there's, a, if there's a cougar around the corner, you're not gonna sit down and meditate. You're not gonna yeah, sit yeah, still, you're gonna, you're right? But, but so imagine, tree. Yeah. Here you've got, the, you got the survival gene switched on and nobody is gonna believe in possibility when you're living in survival, right? Wow, yeah. So then when you're living in stress, what happens is, is you narrow your focus on the cause. 
you narrow your focus on matter, the object, the thing. And so people get switched on and all of their attention is on their outer world. When the hormones of stress kick on, the body gets an arousal, now your attention is on the body. And of course, when you're under stress, you're trying to predict the future based on the past. And now you're literally enslaved into three-dimensional reality. So then how do you get what you want? You gotta try harder, you gotta force it more, you gotta work harder, you gotta fight for it. It's matter trying to change matter. It's exhausting. And people just burn out, right? So then we now know that when you go from a narrow focus on something and you begin to open your focus, mm. you create a sense and awareness that the act of opening your focus causes you to stop thinking. And if you stop thinking, you no longer activate those circuits and you start to slow your brain waves down. Mm -hmm. And as you slow your brain waves down, you start connecting to that autonomic nervous system, the thing that's giving you life. And all of a sudden, when you get beyond yourself, it says, uh, he's gone. Let's step in and just clean up this mess before he gets back. Really? And its job is to create order and balance. So your body will start to do that for you. The innate intelligence will step right in. Once you connect, you gotta connect. So you gotta know how to change your brain waves. You can't change your brain waves. Wow. You stay in that active state. You're basically moving furniture around. You're analyzing your life within some disturbing emotion. And I can tell you after looking at all those brain stands, if you're analyzing your life within some disturbing emotion, you're going to make your brain worse. Mm. In fact, you are thinking in the past, right? So you teach people the formula, how to open their focus, change their brain waves, connect to that invisible field, and all of a sudden, different compartments of the brain start synchronizing. The front of the brain starts talking to the back of the brain, the right side starts talking to the left side, and all of a sudden, what sinks in the brain links in the brain. And all of a sudden you see this person starting to feel more like themselves. And when you see those two hemispheres of the brain start lighting up, watch out because wow. that person's gonna feel really whole. They're gonna start loving life. They're gonna feel like they're gonna be in love with life because the union of polarity and duality is wholeness at the exact same time. Coherent brain, when you're resentful, when you're judgmental, when you're impatient, your heart beats out of rhythm. Why? You're stepping on the gas and you're stepping on the brake at wow. the same time. Your body and its intelligence living in survival is saying T-Rex is back there, but you're not running because you're sitting across the table looking at somebody smiling and your body's revved up, right? So the heart is beating arrhythmically. And when that happens, you're, you're squandering, or you're using all the body's life force and turning it into chemistry, right? You're using so, all that energy to, to survive as opposed to think beyond. Right, right, so you're drawing from your vital life force, that invisible field around your body, and you're turning it into chemistry. You actually are going to shrink your own field. The hormones of stress cause us to be materialists, right? We, 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 when we're under stress, we're, we're we're using our senses to determine reality. So now you feel more like matter and less like energy, more separate from possibility. So then to teach a person then how to regulate that heart center. And we do this, uh, we've done 6,000 heart scans. Why? Because if I can teach you how to get in that heart state and I can teach you how to activate that center and I can teach you how to regulate an elevated emotion, the heart starts to create a very coherent signature. And when the heart starts beating like a drum, like dropping a pebble in water, it begins to produce a measurable magnetic field up to three meters wide. Now you're more energy than matter, more wave than particle. Wow. Now, that field that's being created is measurable. And that's an energy. And energy is frequency, and all frequency carries information. So what is the information when it makes it here? That you're it sharing could, into the world. Yeah. It could carry the thought of your healing. Why? Because it's consistent with the energy. Guilt isn't gonna carry the thought of your healing. It's a different frequency. And all of a sudden now, the person is elevating their emotional state and they're allowing their thought to be carried on that frequency. They're broadcasting a whole new energetic signature. But thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. And how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. Mm. So then the question is, if you keep practicing creating that state of being, it should become familiar to you, yes or no? Yes. The word meditation literally means to become familiar with. So then if you're practicing moving into these elevated states and your heart is coherent and we're measuring and I can say, Lewis, you got it. Now do it for 30 minutes. Now do it for 60 minutes. And you practice creating that coherence. You'll know when you're there and when you're not. Yes or no? Sure. And then you would be able to say like a skill, like anything else, give me a minute. 
I'm going to step out, and you're going to go back in the heart coherence and bring up that state. How now, do we get there in the heart? Oh, well, then we practice the formula. Again, rest your attention, start sure, calling sure. up elevated emotions, and when you start seeing that that starts happening, then you sustain it, and you keep practicing, and all of a sudden, it gets longer and longer and longer. Now, what's the relevance behind that? Well, we've measured neurotransmitters. So when a person actually activates their heart, the heart releases a chemical called uh, oxytocin. Oxytocin is actually the love chemical. Not oxytocin signals nitric oxide. Nitric oxide signals another chemical called endothelial derived relaxing factor. What does that do? Causes the vessels in your heart to swell. You will literally have energy in your heart. You will literally feel like your heart is full. Now, now once you have that feeling, you're not going to want to trade that feeling for anyone or anything. You're going to say, why would I judge that person? If I judge that person, I'm going to lose this feeling. Now, all of a sudden, you're self-regulating. Now, once the heart is activated, I just was at the research lab this week. <laughs> once the heart is activated, it acts as an amplifier, and it a a amplifies energy in the brain. So once you start opening that heart, and it begins to signal the brain, you're going to suppress the survival centers. In fact, the research shows it will reset your baseline. In other words, if you're anxious and vigilant and you learn how to self-regulate, you'll actually reset the baseline. And you'll say, well, the trauma was 15 years ago. I saw my, uh, somebody get murdered or whatever. And then we'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the moment, the heart, not the brain, it's the heart that actually resets the amygdala. And all of a sudden, the person all of a sudden switches down and all of a sudden, like, I, don't, I just don't have anxiety. We have thousands of brain scans with anxiety and depression from people from all walks of life. They've reset. And all of a sudden, they don't have that anxiety. They don't have to take medications or do anything else. They know how to self-regulate.